Let's get right on into our conversation about the Cancer Research and Treatment Center. Uh, Dr. Tanya Trippett is here. She's the president and the founder of the Wish for Life Foundation. She's an oncologist as well. It's great to see you again, Doc. Good morning. It's great to see you as well. Welcome. Thank you for having me. How have you been? We've been well. Good to know. And also here in the studio is Rob Fleming. He's a project manager uh, for the uh, International Children Cancer Research Center course with the wish for life foundation as well rob good morning good morning welcome good morning. thank you great to have you here in the studio um well, well welcome back what, what have you been up to i mean the last time we spoke it was on gh1 tv that's, and that's uh, you were up to some things that's correct so we finally have uh, broken ground and mm -hmm. uh, rob is with us to oversee uh the beginnings of uh, clearing the the site and also placing the perimeter wall. Mm -hmm. In addition, we've been partnering with the National Information Technology Agency to begin to create our own fiber optic network. Mm -hmm. um, um, and then it won't be on just a fiber optic, but it'll be multimodal uh, IT network um, that will allow us to be able to communicate with the hospitals here in the region, hospitals across the globe, and also the um, equipment providing institutions. So we're really excited about this. That's right. And for those who don't know, and may be hearing this for the first time, I mentioned earlier that the Wish for Life Foundation is trying to do this project. Can you help us understand why this is important and why you decided to do this in the first place? The reason why this is important is that um, uh, if you look at children who are in the United States and Europe, when we look at p all the pediatric cancers, most are curable. So about 80 to 85 percent are curable the first time. The concern that we has it, have is that when we look at the rates in Africa, it's far lower than that. It's the reverse. 20 percent are being cured at present, and even lower. And so that's too large of a gap, I think, globally, to sit by and not say that this is okay for it to happen. So we're trying to partner with institutions here um, to close that gap, bring the cure rates high, and decrease the stress to the child and to the family, and to give them back their life. So this is why it's important. And, and what, what has it been like so far, you know, coming up with this project and trying to execute it? What has the journey been like right up to this point? The journey actually has been quite a long one. Mm -hmm. um, there's many uh, facets to delivering, delivering cancer care that's far more complex than just having a clinic and so to bring all of the partners together who are experts in this field, it's taken some coordination. And now we have more and more people coming in. We're getting, we've passed that watershed moment and now mm -hmm. there's a flood of people wanting to help both in Ghana and across the world. Mm -hmm. So we're really excited about that. Mm -hmm. So Rob, I mean, um, you guys visited a facility a few, a few days ago. Yep. Where are we at with that, you know? And what were your observations? Of course, so you, you, you're working closely on that project, yep. so. so. So I think, uh, just to give everyone an update on where we are, mm -hmm. uh, last year in July, we signed the lease agreement for the land, uh, which was then transferred into the Wish for Life Foundation um, hands. Uh, from that time until now, we've been doing the due processes, ensuring that the paperwork is all done and the uh, leg legalities are, are completed, which I think we finalize now in April this year. Mm -hmm. uh, we went through a, a, a tender process to uh, appoint a perimeter fencing contractor who is now appointed. We've appointed a company by the name of Surge Boost International, um, who have been amazing in, in assisting us with getting started. They broke ground on the fencing I think two weeks, uh, three weeks ago now, mm -hmm. uh, end of end of June, um, and we visited site on Wednesday afternoon to uh, to to engage with the process and the progress, and uh, very pleased with with how they're getting on. Mm. Um, so this is uh, I said to Tanya actually yesterday, it's a little bit surreal after such a long time we right. actually yeah. see bulldozers and and uh, equipment on site starting to to r realize this dream that's yeah. been going on for now for me 10 years and I think probably 12 or 15 years for, for Tanya so mm. uh, we, we're very excited about that. W would you say you are within schedule looking at how the work is progressing would you say that you are uh, within schedule or behind schedule when it comes to the completion <coughs> dates so, that so you had initially envisioned? So effectively we, we we've appointed the the fencing perimeter fencing contractor now to secure the site mm -hmm. um, create a, a reality of, of the site being there this is all part of our community engagement, which is continuing, and, and we've been ramping that up at the moment as well. Um, I think once we have the, the perimeter fence up, 
this will realize the the hospital the development to the local community as well um, for the construction side of things we still have a way to go on the design mm -hmm. <coughs> we are anxious to get started with that um, the reality is we would like to break ground on the construction proper um, by the end of this year but in reality probably uh, first quarter of next year to start platforms finalize the positions of where the hospital on the site will go mm -hmm. where the different other buildings will go and, and uh, detail out what services will actually go into those those buildings right and you know the reception you know for this facility what has it been like so far of course you were you know mentioning that a lot of people are beginning to come on board and all of that so what has it what has it been like is it overwhelming is it underwhelming what has it been like i think it's um it, it's overwhelming because of the fact that you um you, do, you underestimate the kindness of others and generosity of others mm. and we've had persons come forward with um, gifts of the most amazing thing uh, amazon uh, helped us um, both with infrastructure and then will um, give us the providing um, support for the first year for free. And then the planning, they've joined our team to plan with us so that we have the best caliber uh, infrastructure for information technology, which is so critical for uh, treatment of children with cancer. And I think um, that's just one example of many. Um, now there are many companies in California that are wanting to come and help and partner. And this is actually, the consultation is for free. Mm. So it's not for charge. And um, the same in, in, in Ghana, many of the business, uh, businesses have actually reached out to us to help. How can we make this happen? Right. Because they see the value in the life of a child. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the part that's overwhelming. Um, it's just incredible. Mm. And it's really kind of renewed my faith in mankind. That's great. And, and you talk about people seeing, you know, the value in the life of a child, right? So when, when, when there's a facility like this, even here in, here in Ghana, how critical or crucial is this facility, you know, to the country and even the sub-region, the West African sub-region? It is very, very critical. Mm -hmm. um, there are many um, nations within the continent of Africa who are struggling. They don't have the full resources that Ghana has in the healthcare sector. And so they're looking to Ghana and the placement of this facility as a place closer towards home where their children can get the care that they need. Mm. What this means personally to a child is to eliminate the suffering even while going through cancer, having the pain medications that are necessary, having the treatment that has less side effects, being able to get back into school again, beginning to be a part of their family in a more productive way, and then to move on from the cancer and beginning to live, live a normal life. Mm. That's the most important part. And so what we want to see is 85% of the children within a short period of time are being cured of their cancer, moving on to a happy life. Mm. And I think that this is so important for them. The parental's perspective, the parent goes through the cancer with the child, both for themselves and for the child. So the stress is twice. And for the parents, we hope that we will allevi alleviate that pressure and and also the economic pressure that cancer puts on the family. Mm. So keeping the family together, reducing the stress and having them see cancer, I say as a page in the book of the child's life, not the whole book of the child's life. Mm. So essentially this is this is pretty important. And of course we here in Ghana have always said this, uh, very happy that you know it's happening here. Uh, what do you say, Rob, to people who should be interested in this and should want to come on board, you know, to really support this project mm -hmm. to reach completion. I think one of the messages we would like to try and get out into the public is that this is not just a small clinic that's being planned. Mm -hmm. um, we said yesterday, and we were talking to, to one of the other interested parties that, that we, we had a meeting with yesterday, where um, I think the, a very large majority of hospitals in the US and Europe would be, are envious of the planned equipment and facilities that will be going into this hospital. Mm. It will be a center of excellence for cancer care, not only in Ghana or the West Africa region, but across the world. Um, so I anticipate that, that there would be um, children coming from across the continent and possibly even further afield mm -hmm. to seek treatment at, the, at uh, our hospital once it's completed. And I think what my message would be to, the, to, to people in Ghana would be, we would love you to get on board, come and mm -hmm. talk to us, go and look at the website, uh, mm -hmm. wishforlife.org. Mm -hmm. um, 
look at the social media handles um, and get involved. If there's information you'd like, please reach out, um, ask the questions that we can, can then put, put answers to. Mm. So definitely the public is invited to help and to yeah. you know, contribute towards this project, right? So yes. how, how do they do that? How do they do that? So there are a number of ways. Um, obviously, if you would like to make a contribution and have your name as one of the persons that helped to create this hospital, mm -hmm. there are a number of ways to do that. If you go to our website, uh, www.wishforlife.org, and then we have a campaign website that's separate, www.voicesforlife.com. And then easy way with Momo, um, is the number is star 718 star 25 star 958 hashtag star 718 star 25 star 958 hash that's right that's the number that you can contribute to that's right uh, there's also a bank account number yeah so we have a number of bank accounts mm -hmm. um, uh, probably the one that's most relevant is the Ghana uh, CD account so the number is at um, uh, Stanbeck Bank and it's 904 001 one one six six eight eight six. So we'll repeat it nine zero four zero zero one 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 six six eight eight six. All right, so that's how you can get in touch, and that's how you can contribute. That's you correct. know, to to this uh, particular project. Uh, so. Uh, before before we wrap this up, uh, we hear reports of you know rising cases of cancer. So, how can we protect ourselves? I think the most important thing that you can do to protect yourself is uh, to have regular doctors' visits, especially for your children. Um, if there are signs or symptoms that are uh, different than what is normal for the child, go in early. Early detection is very very important. It's hard in children. Um, the, their cancers differ from adults in that they don't engage in behaviors that you can eliminate. And so early detection is what is most important. If a mother sees her or a father sees her child more irritable than usual, or they stop walking or they say they have pain or you feel a lump in their neck or a swelling in their cheek or change when you take a picture of a child and one of their pupils looks white, that's a warning sign that's telling you there's something there that needs to be checked. Mm. So early detection, not being fearful, go in to see a doctor and get the help that you need early on. The earlier the detection is, the higher the chance of cure. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, Rob, what would you say finally as we're wrapping up this conversation? Uh, there's so many things to say. How do yeah. I wrap that up into a single <laughs> a single sentence? But uh, I think uh, we we would welcome public engagement, mm -hmm. questions, uh, people want to know about the hospital, what is it, the detail around it, please go onto the website, um, have a look-see, and uh, raise the questions on the website, and, mm -hmm. and we'll do our best to answer those questions and, and engage with, with the public where possible. All right. We've also opened an office here, uh, now on 29th Century Road, um, so please, if uh, folks want to stop by, um, we'll be happy to engage them. Uh, so please feel comfortable reaching out. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us in the studio. And uh, just before we go also, um, j just something um, brief. For, for those who don't know about the Wish for Life Foundation, let's, let's, let's talk a little bit about that, you know, what the foundation is about, how it came about, and, um, you know, some of the things that you've, you've, you've done up till now. So the name actually comes from an uh, uh, actual personal wish of a child uh, who I treated in the United States yeah. who was from Rwanda. And he was 13 years old and diagnosed with lymphoma. And one month into his treatment, when we we're offering a make-a-wish, something to look forward to, he said, I don't want to wish. My wish is for you to tr travel to Africa to make sure the children there are receiving the same kind of care that uh, I am receiving. Mm. He's now a cancer survivor over nine years out and uh, doing very, very well. And um, in 2013, as a result of um, this uh, communication and, and discussion, we formed the charity. Um, and it's been in a live sense. It's hard to believe we are over a decade. And our goal is to provide quality and compassionate cancer care for children uh, in limited resource nations as much as possible. Um, so we plan for five 
cancer centers in five continents is our, our hope and our, our aspiration. Right. And that's brilliant stuff. And uh, thank you so much for you're the welcome. good work that you're doing. It's our pleasure. And uh, we're, 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 we're fully supporting and waiting for, for this project to be completed because we know it's something that's going to be very good for Ghana, good for the West African sub-region, good for Africa, and good for the world at large. So thank you very much. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Us. Yes, uh, Dr. Tanya Trippett, president and founder of the Wish for Life Foundation, and Rob Fleming, who is you know the project manager for the $250 million Cancer Research and Treatment Center, which has been constructed. It's been awesome having you here in the studio. You're still listening to Star 103.5 FM. There's still more to come up here on the morning star. Of course, uh, it's a Friday, and so you know uh, that our discussions on, you know, the current affairs and the politics of the day are going to commence very shortly. Stay tuned.